Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. Just want to share with you some comments on the requirement for the final report for L301 in our lab. Uh, to do the final lab report, I prepared this presentation. Uh, which I will explain what is required from each group of the students to do. So you have to submit as per your previous group one report which will be counted for the final lab report. In this uh, there are a few goals that I want you to see. Uh, first, you have to solve the transfer function using Laplace transfer, and I give you the example. Then, uh, this will show you how to plot the system response in a given a transfer function using MATLAB code and Simulink. The Laplace transfer is a mathematical tool for converting well behaved domain time domain functions into frequency domain expressions. In the Laplace transform, we consider the nation of complex frequencies. So it is not a, a real frequency, it is a complex frequency, which we are referred to as an S. In this term, we have both real and imaginary component. So this is real and this is imaginary component. In circuit analysis problem, we convert time domain function into frequency domain using one-sided Laplace transform. So this is one-sided Laplace transform, and here is the system representation in general. So in electrical circuits, we can find out this transfer function or the input or the output at the S domain using this equation. Similar to the Fourier transform, there are tables listing Laplace transform pairs, which could be used uh, avoiding doing the integral again and again. The inverse, inverse Laplace transform are typically found using partial fraction expansion techniques, similar to the Fourier transform. So these tables of properties and tables of transform pairs would be very easy and helpful to do the transformation back and forth between time domain and S domain. So this is the example that uh, consider in this uh, final lab report. Uh, this is a circuit given uh, and normally we can move from time to main circuit. Uh, this is the first step we need to construct the S domain circuit, equivalent circuit. So as you can see, each element here was replaced by its equivalent. So the R's are here, the inductors is here, and the capacitor is here. So uh, please note that I have provided uh, in the appendix of this an equivalent circuit element at S domain for each and every of these elements. You can refer to it. Analyze the circuit nodal analysis. So once we move to the S domain, now there is no need to do a differential equations, and you just need to do uh, with the S domain. So if you want to calculate here, uh, analyze the circuit, we need to do the nodal analysis, for instance. So V out minus Vg over R, which is the first term, then V out minus zero over the summation 250 plus 0.05s, as you can see here, then uh, V out minus zero over this, which comes to be in this format. So 10 to the power 6 over S, the S will come in the denominator, denominators. And this will be equal to zero. So then just simply solving for V out, 
we get this expression so we collect all the terms which are uh, uh, times v out in one side and all the terms in vg in one side and then <coughs> we do it in this way after uh, dividing by vg we get the transfer function and this is our transfer function which will be used in simulation so what you should do is explained over here you have to do a MATLAB code and you have to do a simulink so I give you this example please go uh, go through it uh, start with implementing this example I want to see the results from your own code for this example first then go back to the additional task and do the next step so consider a linear system representing by transfer function this is transfer function given to you i want you to do uh, simulate this uh, uh, transfer function through matlab code and simulink blocks to find out and plot the system impulse response step response and sine wave response and exponential decay response so this is the math lab code uh, given for you we have defined first the nominators and denominator for the system and using this transfer function we have defined the continuous time uh, system uh, in its domain and then once it is there we can plot using the impulse sys so just take the system and put it in the this function impulse and it will plot for you and this is just to put the x axis x label y label as you can see here the time and amplitude and the title for the plot which is the impulse response for the system and I just put the grid on so we can see how is the details of the function. Then second to plot the step response, you just uh, need to do step sys. So uh, after defining the system as previous step, you need just to use step rather than impulse. And immediately it will come for you. For the sine wave, first you have to define the sine wave and I give you this time axis definition. Please use it always in, in this uh, system and the, in the next system. Then uh, using this T, we are defining the sine wave. Once we define the sine wave, we can use the LSIM to simulate the system response with this input over this time period. So once we define it, we just need to plot x3 and y3. And as you can see here, t and x3 and t and y3. You can separate this into two uh, plots, like plot, then hold on, and then again plot, or you can plot it, as you can see here, in one command. This is the result. You need to notice that the crossing of the output is not uh, at the same point where the input is crossing the zero axis. The last uh, one in MATLAB code is the exponential decay response. And uh, this is the definition of the system. So first we have to define the input and then uh, define the output using the simulation uh, command else. And then just plot these as you can see here. And please note that uh, this is the output which is uh, not reaching point 2 and it is decaying very fast before reaching 2 for it is almost 0. And this is the input uh, exponential decay. By this, we have finished the MATLAB code and we are repeating the same in the Simulink blocks. So for the impulse, uh, this is the block diagram for it. I will give you uh, snapshots for these uh, settings 
for your reference in the next slide. Please note that the impulse is created by subtracting two steps. Since it is in uh, continuous time, so it has to be very narrow and in the same time the area under it, it would be equal to uh, 1. So uh, we just make the second step a little bit lagging behind. So this minus this will create an impulse response very close to the impulse response and I have created with 100 and uh, I shift it with uh, like uh, 1 over 100 seconds and then we created the area under the rectangular equal to 1 so in the transfer function you have to define the denominator and denominator as we've seen in the previous step just I want to go back a little bit so I want to make sure that you understand this so the denominators is the coefficient multiplying by uh, in the transfer function and the denominator is the same for the polynomials so here what is the coefficient in front of s is 1 what is the coefficient of the second one is 1 so here the coefficient of s2 is 1 the coefficient of s1 is 5 and the coefficient of s0 is 6 so 1, 1 in the denominator and <coughs> 1, 5, 6 in the denominator. As you can see, 1, 5, 6. Similarly, you have to define the denominator and denominator over here. Then once you plot this, uh, you could uh, immediately see these plots. And here is the block diagram parameters where we can see all these parameters inside. You can notice that the final value was 100 in both and the step time was adjusted to be 0 and then a little bit lagging behind which is 0 0.01 which is 1 over 100 seconds. And this is as we can see the denominator coefficient and denominator coefficient as we've seen it in the, uh, <coughs> the MATLAB code. I have adjusted the stop time in the upper wrapping uh, to make it 3.5 so we can see the little bit more details inside the signal. Then I repeat the same for step. The step is much easier. Just applying the step into this transfer function and taking the input from here and the output from here. I have just renamed the out to, be, to have it x and y so you can see it in the plot. Then I repeat it for sine wave. You have to just adjust the sine wave and make sure that the frequency is 2t. Uh, that's it. Then for exponential I have created this as an input because there's no uh, easy way to do it in exponential as a step function. So uh, the output of this transfer function will be an exponential as you can see over here. So uh, you have to repeat this and simulate this uh, work before start <coughs> working on the additional task. And in the additional task, I just want you to repeat the same exact steps, uh, but using a different transfer function. Uh, and the transfer function chosen to be simulated here is exactly the same uh, one that we have uh, seen in the example. So this is the example that we have calculated the transfer function for it. And this is the transfer function. So the coefficient is clear here. This is 1000. And the second coefficient is 5 times 5 million which is 5 times 10 to the power 6 for the denominator the first coefficient is 1 second coefficient is 6000 and the third coefficient is 25 million so what you need to do is to do uh, create a MATLAB and plot these figures through MATLAB code and then create a simulink plug and plot these things th through simulink in the report, you, you have to submit for me the code and the plots from the MATLAB and the plot diagram as well as the plots in the Simulink. 
and uh, you have in you have to do in each of these like in MATLAB code and Simulink you have to repeat this so you have to do it for inputs you have to do it for step sine wave and exponential decay this is the appendix where you can see the circuit uh, equivalent uh, the elements in the circuit equivalent in the S domain as you can see over here by this we have uh, concluded this presentation thank you and uh, I will wait for your report soon